Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, welcoming you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play, where we are returning to Elite Zoo North for the 75th episode. So ladies and gentlemen, 75 episodes. Thank you all for joining me on this journey, uh, for helping me develop this uh, franchise, this one zoo franchise for all these many episodes. I'm super excited to dive in today, and uh, what we're going what we're going to do is we're going to actually kick off with a bit of a time lapse, uh, and then we're going to do our zoo tour after the time lapse. The tour might actually end up taking a big chunk of this episode. I don't know if we'll have time for any management stuff uh, because our zoo is huge right now. It will take time to travel around and actually enjoy the experience. I don't want to just rush through it, right? But that's why we're also going to kick off with a time lapse. So we will have some progress guaranteed with today's episode rather than just doing a full on tour. Now, if you do or don't like what we do today, you need to let me know in the comments down below because my hope is that every 25 episodes I can do a tour but uh, I'll adjust it based on your feedback, as, as I always try to do. Before we dive in, though, I just want to take a quick peek at the franchise achievements. I don't think we've ever looked at this screen in this Let's Play, um, but I feel like it might be nice to do so. It's a bit of a milestone moment. 75 episodes is <laughs> no small deal. Uh, so I just want to quickly go over some of this stuff. Um, and I feel like if you've been watching along for this many episodes, then maybe you're interested as well, hopefully. Now, in terms of the community challenges, there's not much to look at because we didn't really participate in too many of them. Uh, we've got, there's always a silver lining where uh, all we had to do was breed silver rated animals. And apparently we got a bronze medal for how much we did, which was 17 animals, I guess. Um, and apart from that, unfortunately, most of these community challenges happened when I was busy with other aspects of our zoo. And I didn't want to just farm challenges uh, with, you know, zoos that I wasn't showing on the channel or anything. Uh, perfectly reasonable for people that wanted to do that elsewhere. I'm not, I'm not, you know, saying anything about that. I personally just didn't want to do it. And so I missed out on a lot of challenges, which, yeah, I have some regrets, especially considering the glorious names that some of these challenges had. But, um... We'll, we'll try and get some more done in the, uh, yeah, in the future. We'll see if we can get involved a bit more. Now, animal breeding trophies. These just give us uh, trophies based on how many of a particular animal we have bred. Also keeps a track of how many animals uh, or how many of a particular animal we've bred. It looks like it's mostly bronze trophies, actually, uh, which is pretty wild. We've got a silver over here with the Indian peafowl, a silver with the tortoises. And I mean, I guess these barriers to entry are pretty high. The pronghorn antelope might be our only gold one because we got 104 bread and 100 is that gold barrier, so to speak. And then 11 saltwater crocodiles and really only 36 timber wolves. We've had timber wolves since day one, since day zero. 120 years of this zoo existing and we've only bred 36, not even enough for a silver. That's actually kind of wild, I'm not going to lie. Wild, like all these animals, I suppose. Then we've got uh, Release to the Wild trophies. Oh, not too many of these. Bears Tapir, we tend to send those off. Uh, we've got, wow, a silver for the Indian Peafowl, 79. And then Bronze for Pronghorn Antelope. I really ought to maybe release more animals to the wild. Now, a lot of these animals are uh, from the Africa region that we haven't touched yet. And I do intend to get to uh, work on the African stuff in the near future. But um, that's obviously why we have a lot of gaps as well. Uh, animal adoption trophies. We've got uh, well, bronze for the bison, bronze for the Indian peafowl, same for the antelope and the timber wolves. And that's because we typically breed most of the animals after we adopt them a couple times. We keep our breeding relatively internal. And then we've got our animal trade trophies. This is, I assume, trading out. Um, okay. Not surprised that the tortoises have, you know, a bronze at the very least. And the antelopes as well. And that's all. Wow. Wild. Okay. Jeez. Kind of puts things into perspective, doesn't it? We do a lot of uh, breeding. We also let a lot of our animals pass away in our own zoo. Um, I guess that's pretty well represented and documented in these uh, achievements, if you will. Where's the achievement for, you know, most animals raised to a uh, full life? Where's that one? <laughs> Where's my pride and joy? No, I kid. I'm pretty happy with our overall achievements. But with that looked at, with that said, folks... Let's dive into Elite Zoo North, shall we? Let's go ahead and get to work. Now, as we load in, I want to mention, as always, folks, yes, it's been 74 and now 75 episodes. If you want to see 75 more, if you want to see, you know, 150 more, if you want to see 225 more, however many more episodes you want, the best way to make sure it happens is by letting me know. Leaving a like and a comment down below still makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel. 
It really does help me make decisions and I greatly appreciate it. And on top of that, I've said it countless times, I like reading through the comments. Y'all always have feedback, ideas, jokes, just anecdotes, whatever it might be. I enjoy reading through the comments, I love it. Uh, so please do not hesitate to keep that coming. I wanna note as well as we load in, uh, I'll actually have a pinned comment down below, uh, which will link you to another video that I will have released yesterday when you're watching this, if you're watching this as soon as it releases, yesterday, later on in the day, than my usual time. Uh, I just wanna spread the word on it. It was for a game that, um, well, I'll, I'll give you, th there's details in that video, but it's, it's a game that very much shares my sense of humor in many ways, which is why I feel like if you watch my Planet Zoo Let's Play, you might enjoy what that game kinda has to offer, at least from a sense of humor perspective. It's always nice to kinda spread the word on some things. It's, it's for an indie game, actually, so I, I like trying to spread the word on uh, good indie games and stuff as well. So just thought I'd mention that at the top of this episode. Um, it will be in the pinned comment down below. Just another video for you to check out. And it's a short one too. Just thought I'd, you know, throw it out there like I do every once in a while for, uh, for videos that are off the beaten path, so to speak. Anyway, enough sidetracked conversation, enough of an introduction, enough talk of achievements. That is all the past. We must look to the future before we look to the past again, because technically doing a tour is looking at the past. But listen, let's ignore that for a quick second, okay? Uh, we're going to look to the future, <laughs> and we're going to dive into our time lapse. Yeah, let's do it. All right, folks, I am really quite pleased with uh, what I do this time lapse. A couple of different things. First of all, I renamed this Just a Memento to uh, Bizarre Gifts, because that is an excellent suggestion I cannot say no to. And then the next thing I do is I take care of some really uh, compelling feedback I got from the last session's comment section. Uh, like I say always, folks, I look to the feedback, uh, I appreciate the feedback, and I let it guide me when uh, I make a decision that could be improved upon, right? And that, that happens often enough, I imagine. <laughs> um, and it was very clear that I'd made a, uh, or there was, a, there was an oversight with the pangolin enclosure. I was so enamored by the idea of the enclosure. I was so enamored by what it, uh, you know, meant and every, all the implications I was trying to make with the tiling and this, that, and the other thing that I completely forgot that the animal might enjoy the outdoors a little more. Um, and so having seen all of your feedback, you know, on that topic, having seen so many of you mention, Hey, yeah, it's, you know, this, it's nice, but it's good, but this is an issue. I was like, wow, you're absolutely right. So thank you all for pointing that out. That's the first thing that we do this time lapse is, um, well, okay, so technically it's the second thing that we do this time lapse. The first thing was rename the uh, the gift shop, but uh, this is uh, probably the biggest chunk of this time lapse is just repairing this uh, enclosure, upgrading it, you know, fixing it up, uh, making it suitable for the animal. Um, so what we do is we basically double the size of the natural area. Uh, we open up how much room they have to actually run around and play where it's, you know, soil and grass and whatnot. They have still a fair bit of room inside as well, because again, they're nocturnal animals. I want to give them have a space, uh, give them have, what happened to my English there? I want them to have a space to just tuck away and hide um, and enjoy, you know, the, 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 sort of serenity of a quiet, dark corner if they so choose. Uh, though we do also add a skylight because that was another thing that was suggested. It's like, hey, yeah, you know, it's a little too dark maybe. It's good for them to have a dark corner, but it's just all kind of dark and kind of dingy feeling. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point as well. Um, so it's great to, again, have that kind of feedback to, to look to and, and uh, to uh, adjust my approach with. So uh, we're, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make those changes. And you'll notice I also, again, many of you pointed out that hey, keepers can't actually get into the little uh, secret cubby space. So I went ahead and deleted the backing to that because it doesn't need to have the backing. To me, it was just kind of fun, like to have a, a small little hole that the pangolin could go through. Uh, but then you're absolutely right. Keepers can't get in there. And should there be, you know, feces to clean up or, you know, eventually and probably inevitably a body, uh, keepers need to be able to get in there. Uh, so we do that, we fix that, and then we, of course, we fix this area as well to make sure that the walls don't extend too far out. And you can see it's a lot more, it's, it's about a 50-50 split now of indoor versus outdoor, and the outdoor space, of course, has trees. We've got the little termite mound as well, because I think it's a, it's nice to have that out in a natural space. Uh, their food is outdoors as well, and a lot less stone. Uh, we have to add a little bit, a little bit of stone flooring to make this transition smoother, but uh, we minimize it significantly. 
and I think the animal would enjoy the space a lot more now. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for you know your feedback, greatly appreciated, and uh, it helps to drive me and this zoo to be better. Um, but I think that's a lot better now. Uh, I also decide to extend the little tree coverage on the side over here. I don't want the pangolin enclosure to be too big. I don't want them to, uh, again, you can only have three in an enclosure at a time, right? So if it's too big, then you'll like rarely see them. Uh, I, I wonder, I worry if even now it's too big, but that's something I'll think about and we'll see how guests interact when they eventually come here. Now, there were a lot of excellent name suggestions and the one I've ultimately gone with is Long Claw Armory. It is yet another Game of Thrones reference, yes, with Long Claw. Um, or I should say a Song of Ice and Fire reference with Long Claw. However, beyond that, um, the Pangolin have extremely long claws, which if I recall correctly, I kind of remarked on with some surprise last session. I didn't realize just how long they were until I saw it all animated and stuff. So I really like the name Long Claw Armory. It touches on the armor. It touches on the claws. It, for some reason, ties in with the fact that this China section has again, for some reason, become a Game of Thrones section. I don't know why that happened. I don't know when that happened, but the Red Keep happened, then we have Castle Black and White, and now we've got Long Claw Armory. So it all comes together nicely. Um, <laughs> again, there were a lot of great suggestions. It was, it was hard to pick out, but two comments said Long Claw Armory, and I was like, okay, well, I like it. <laughs> and it was also suggested, actually, that I add some uh, education boards because... Um, the pangolin is used for medicine, natural medicine, a lot. So it would be nice to have some awareness about that raised. And also, the um, they're, they're, they're one of the most, I think, poached animals as well. Again, still tied into that whole medicine thing. So we have a poaching sign as well as a, uh, a, a natural medicine sign or whatever the, the, the official name is in-game, I forget. Um, and then we move on to this section over here it was pointed out that maybe having a connection on this end would get guests to actually go up more often or come down from up there or, you know, whichever way you want to consider it. Uh, and thankfully, we were able to make a nice smooth ramp because I was really kind of getting uh, bothered at how the steps looked and I didn't want to do zigzagging or curving steps. Uh, but thankfully, the ramp worked. Adding some more benches as well. Many of you recommended that I, I take a moment to add some more benches where guests are getting tired. I was able to put these like back-to-back -back benches at certain wider path sections, which I think is going to be quite nice. Hopefully the guests will use that. Hopefully it'll give them more energy about halfway through the zoo and it will drive them to continue their visit to the far reaches of the zoo. Again, I really want to see more action for some of our far off animals. And I think part of it is that even though we're hitting like 8K visitors at times, even though that's happening, we're not able to see them all because our, our visual is limited to 5K, right? So it might be more crowded up there than we think, but the donations are pretty low. The donations are pretty low, which is indicative of a small crowd. The last thing I work on in this enclosure uh, is wayfinding. Now, wayfinding to those of you or for those of you that don't know, wayfinding is the uh, process of designing uh, navigation. And that's something we've talked about fairly often with this zoo with like how, oh, you know, it'd be nice to get some signs up. Totally agree. And I was thinking about like, okay, well, how do we want to do the signage? Do we do animals? Do we do regions? And I thought what made this zoo kind of like stand out, quote unquote, was that it is very region focused, right? We have all of our regions and you go to the regions to see the animals of that region. So I thought we'd do uh, a two tiered navigation system. And I only do a part of it today because it's going to be a huge undertaking. And I did not. There's just, there wasn't enough time to do it all uh, in one time lapse. And I apologize for that, but that was the reality of, uh, of today's recording session. Um, but, so again, it, it exists in a, hier in a hierarchy of, uh, of two steps. At the top level is the region. So you go, oh, I want to see some, let's say, East Asian animals, or I want to go to the Arctic Circle, or what have you. Or I want to go to the mysterious coming soon space, whatever it might be. Uh, and so based on that, you know where you're going. And then when you get to that area, there will be animal specific um, steps uh, and maybe even, you know, oh, here's where you go for the food court. Here's where you go for this, that or the other thing, whatever it might be. Um, but to take it a step further, because we don't keep things basic here, right? We have to go above and beyond. I introduce color coded um, path lines. Now, this is I I've seen it used in, in quite a few things. In fact, my. Uh, 
the university of which I am an alumni, <laughs> uses this every year when they do their graduation show. They use this to sort of indicate where you should go for each of the majors to check out the, uh, again, it's a design university or yeah, it's a design university. So it's all design fields, but this kind of pathfinding really helps. You kind of, you have a, a board or something that tells you, Hey, yellow means South Asia. And now you look down, you follow the yellow markers, you go, this is how I get to South Asia. So no matter where you are, you don't have to go looking for the next sign. You don't have to go looking for the next arrow. Uh, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, oh, is this arrow pointing left or is it pointing left and forward or is it pointing just forward? You know, when you get like those really complicated intersections, so you don't have to worry about that because you have something indicating where you need to go. Uh, so I'm, I actually had a lot of fun laying this one out and kind of thinking it up. I was not sure how I'd be able to build it, how I'd be able to integrate it. It will be a very time consuming process. So I did want to see if y'all were interested in it or y'all thought it was ugly and it shouldn't be done again. It might be my baby, but feel free to murder it. Um, so uh, I, I think it's pretty neat, though. It's nice to see how all these shapes and stuff snake around. And as you can see, we've already... Uh, made the India section and then put a bar down. I will be putting down bigger signs of like, welcome to India, welcome to, you know, China, welcome to uh, the Arctic Circle, whatever it might be. Uh, but for now, on a, <laughs> to set the foundation at a ground level, pun entirely intended, I thought that this color coding uh, network and setup would be quite nice. Because uh, you can see now we've got the yellow, the orange, and the red. Now, that's not really uh, entirely accessible either. The yellow, the orange, and the red might be a little too close to each other, but um, I'm giving myself a little bit of leeway there. I might change the colors later, um, but uh, I uh, I think it's a neat way to kind of navigate the uh, the zoo. Now, we'll mention actually on the topic of accessibility, I got a very interesting challenge for a future franchise, which I really want to take on, which is to make a zoo actually be uh, accessible, like wheelchair accessible and stuff. Very interesting challenge, I, and I want to build the pieces required to, to make that work. So I just wanted to mention that on the topic of accessibility. Anyway, that's the wayfinding. And with that, that's the time lapse. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse and it is time for our tour. I'm uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous about a couple of things. Um, as we let time move forward, I'm concerned that things are going to start breaking and there's going to be alert after alert. But uh well, that's a risk I guess we're going to have to take. I'm going to keep an ear out for the notification sound, but sometimes it doesn't really quite uh, click. And also, I want to try and do this in a somewhat uninterrupted fashion. I mean, I'm hoping... Oh, you know what we could do? What we could do is take care of just some management stuff nice and early. Like, go ahead and... Uh, oh, wow, there's a lot of you. <laughs> there is a lot of you, isn't there? Go ahead and get rid of a bunch of these animals, for example. Um... Yeah, why, why, why are there so many of them? I just haven't done this management in a long time, I guess. Uh, so I'm thinking we, we do a little bit of this stuff for the problem animals specifically, not for all of them, because I'll, I'll save the doing for all in a, in a different, uh, different video, a di different uh, session. Um, but I think I want to do like the Titan beetles and stuff, the ones that we know are going to have a bad time if I keep them unattended for too long. Let's go ahead and get a couple of you. Let's go ahead and get some of these spiders as well. Um, got to keep at least one breeding pair over here. There we go. Uh, but definitely the Titan beetles. Definitely the Titan beetles because they will, uh, they will not have a good time for the duration of my, uh, time lapse. Almost guaranteed. Uh, I will also take a look at getting a female, uh, Baird's Tapir because that is something that we need to do. Um, and then, and then we'll be good to, sorry, um, trying to like multitask over here. Uh, <laughs> like reading names while also saying different words. I'm failing hard at it right now, partly because of uh, that time lapse, I think. Um, anyway, uh, what I was saying was, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll clean some of this stuff up. We'll get the Baird's tape here so I don't forget to do that. And then we'll also make sure to uh, keep an ear out for any other warning notifications that might come up. I do have to get rid of a lot. Look at how many Gariel we have. We have way too many Gariel. So I do need to get rid of some of them as well. And um, I think we should be fine after that. Hopefully we can do a relatively uninterrupted... Um, the dance around the uh around the zoo zoe gets to stay she's pregnant oh man we have a lot of uh overcrowded a lot of overcrowded um enclosures or not enclosures but exhibits right now i guess it's been a few episodes since i've done a, a round hasn't it wow 
And it's also a matter of like which episodes, right? It's like sometimes you'll go around and you'll just miss a couple of pregnancies or the pregnancies will just happen or they'll just be about to uh, give birth. So it's hard to stay on top of that sometimes as well. Are we leaving a pair or not? We've got a male, we need a female. Let's leave Vansha here because she is pregnant. And let's go ahead and send y'all to the trade center. I knew it. I knew it was going to be full. I hate that it does this. Like, why? What what gameplay benefit am I getting from this limitation? Where is the fun in uh, in preventing me from just putting all of these animals in at the same time? What's the point? What's the purpose? Is it just to make me have to do it in multiple goes? Because it's not like it's it's not like there is any steps involved that are gameplay, right? I just now have to go to exhibit trading. I have to then go ahead and say storage, select all, quick trade, confirm, and go back to square one. It's just <laughs> it's something that's always kind of like been on top of mind for me every time I've done it in the past. Uh, and I stopped doing it for a while, but now that we're back to kind of moving the animals around like this, it's obviously resurfaced. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Titan Beetles, because they're going to be the big one. And then we'll take a look at the uh, Gariel, because they are also a bit of a problem with how many of them we have uh, sort of stuck in a small space. What's up with Grizzly Grove? Why are y'all upset? Uh, must be something else. Oh, no. Oh, no. We have... We've got one, two, three, four two babies it must be something else habitat is a problem enrichment is a problem well that's because we haven't unpaused i guess um okay we're good we're good we're good where are my titan beetles go ahead and show me only exhibit animals thank you very much there we go so yeah let's go ahead and get rid of a bunch of them and again we did i think we did it recently for them but you know better safe than sorry better safe than sorry there we go Send y'all to the Trade Center. Good stuff. So that should hopefully not become an issue anytime soon. Now, the Gurry, I was pointed out to me, I have like, what, 35 of them apparently just kind of chilling here, which can't be nearly enough space. So let's go ahead and take care of that before we move on as well. Oh my god, I do have 35 of them. What am I doing? They must have reached adulthood recently, because uh, I feel like I would have noticed that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I didn't. I mean, clearly I didn't, because I had to rely on y'all to point it out in the comments. So... We've got our mum and our dad who are still young enough to give more Gariel. That's good. We're, you're the mum and you're the dad. Okay, good. Oh, that's actually perfect that they're, you know, in some ways laying on top of each other right now because that makes it a lot easier for me to look at all the other options and either release them into the wild or send them to a different zoo. I believe we have our first contender for a release into the wild. Let's go ahead and say farewell to Adi. Yep. Away you go. Some decent conservation credits. Again, we're not really hurting for conservation credits, so I'm not really in a, you know, I'm not really worried about that. Send you to the trade center. These are actually decent stats on uh, on Kashvi here. They're okay. Longevity is a little bit on the low side, but it's not uh, too bad. Uh, who else? We've got our mom and dad. Where are all the other adults? These are all babies. These are all babies. <laughs> bunch of juveniles, bunch of juveniles. Where are the other adults? Actually kind of terrifying how much, like, poop there is. Oh, there's, there's a, there's one. What are your stats like? Ah, not the best. Let's go ahead and release you to the wild as well. Go ahead and get our 66 conservation credits. Hmm. I'm actually a little terrified at how hard it is to find some of these animals. <laughs> this water should be clean. I, this doesn't look like clean water, but our filtration is working here. Okay, hang on. Where, where, okay. There can't be 35 animals that I'm not seeing here. That just doesn't make any sense. Oh, right. The reason why it's 35 is because the juveniles, I think, are counted in this. We've got Avni, Gashvi, and Viraj. Gashvi's about to go. So Avni and Viraj are the only ones who are actually still here. Baby, 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 baby. All of these are babies. Yes, they're all juvenile. That's why it's... Ah, okay, right. I wish it would separate juvenile fe male and female from adult male and female. Uh, I like that it points out how many uh, juveniles you have, but it, it really... When I heard I had 35, I was like, okay. I might have some degree of tunnel vision every once in a while, but that... That seems a bit much. <laughs> I feel like I would have noticed that. Uh, anyway... 
that should have us covered on almost all fronts. One last thing I'll check is with regards to the doll sheep. I don't think they can escape anymore. Many of you have been saying, it's like, hey, why not just make their enclosure the entire round rather than doing this likely thing? It's primarily because I wanted to make sure that the, um, that our, uh, uh, what's it called? Our keepers are able to get in from an easy access point that gives them quick access to all the important stuff. I mean, I guess I could put their access point up over here instead, and that would make uh, life a little bit easier with regards to escape, like potential escape routes. But I feel like we've done an okay enough job. I think we're good. This is the only one that's left, but I don't think they actually use that. And even if, okay, if they do, just in case they intend to, we can go ahead and uh, edit the barrier just a little bit is all we need. And hopefully we'll never see that again. And if it continues to be a problem, then fine. I'll go ahead and uh, and change this. If it continues to be a problem. Oh, come on, game. Why? It doesn't matter. It's a null barrier. Just let me put it down anywhere. Let me put it down anywhere. Terrain too uneven for placement. That's just not true. Alright, I, I might do the full ring. I might do the full ring. Unless... Oh... Oh, can I? No. No, why would it let me? Move that down, and then I should be able to move this a little bit further down. No, yes, no, maybe so, maybe so. No, okay. Fine. We'll we'll do a full circle. Um, I'm fine with a with a with a full circle, I guess. It's just it's gonna take me a little bit longer to do. Which is why I was hoping to avoid it. The problem is that when they escape, they scare all the nearby guests off. And uh, and that's obviously a problem. What I can do temporarily for today's session, just so we can get our um our tour happening is I can kind of block this off and prevent their access around this way. And then we should be fine. Well, I have to unpause it, obviously, but uh, then we should be fine. They can't get up there. Well, actually, they'll be able to get up from over here. I'm really happy with this enclosure. I've got a lot of uh, intricate paths for them to take, but uh, that obviously comes with its cost as well. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. Famous last words, I know, but I, I'm really excited to get this tour going. Um, Everything else is taken care of. In case I didn't manage to point it out during the time lapse, we did manage to rename our um, just a memento that was hiding from us over here, not being named Bizarre Gifts. I love it. I got a couple of you suggesting that, and then I'm sure I had time to explain um, Long Claw Armory. But oh, but I actually did not get a chance to rename it properly. Not the steam train. Long Claw Armory. There we go. Cool. Now I think everything's got a name. Um, I've started doing a little bit of wayfinding stuff, but, you know, wasn't able to complete that today. I want to hear your reactions to it, or rather I want to read your reactions to it first, and then I'll, uh, I'll continue building our wayfinding system. But I'm pretty happy with uh, the idea behind it. It's just going to be very time-consuming. Anyway, with all that said and done, let's get this party started, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause and wait for all the notifications to blow up in my face. And uh, as soon as we give it a couple of seconds while sitting at this entrance over here. Okay, looks like we're okay, actually. We're going to go ahead and you, Brian Rhodes. Going to save your name. I don't think I actually have to change it back, though. But if we do, I believe it is T-E-G-I-D-C-A-M. There we go. First person mode. And you know what? We are fortunate to have the... Uh, the, the um, the frame rate kind of fixed with the latest updates. Anyway, so you arrive at the zoo. Oh, we can also see the notifications and everything. That's good. Uh, you arrive at the zoo. Nice, beautiful welcome sign. A couple waterfalls on either side. Yeah, you act like these guys looking up going, wow, this is an amazing rock formation. Beautiful. Uh, info center. Right away, you can see the signage if you've got good eyes. Unfortunately, there's not big, bigger signs that I can use um, to make it clearer without looking ugly. Um, but, you know, if you've got decent eyes, then you can uh, figure out where you want to go. Uh, coming soon to tease you about what might be happening at the zoo in the near future. Excuse me. Uh, thank you. In my way. Um, but yeah, this is a crowded area already. Jeez. Where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? Let's go ahead and start with... Let's go and start that way. You know what? Om Nom Nom usually gets the uh, short end of the stick. Let's go ahead. Up the ramp over here. Oh yeah, I love this camera mode because it actually navigates the ramps and stuff properly. And come up over here if you want to have a quick drink or a quick bite before you begin your tour. Good crowds over here as well, which is nice to see. Always nice to see the uh, spaces actually get used. You can come by over here and you can take a peek at some of the animals here. Where are you, buddy? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, man. 
That's so weird. He's taking a dip. Anyway, I'm moving on over here. Where are you? There's two of you in here. At least one of you's got to poke your head out. Whoa. Excuse me. In my way. Thank you. Hmm, maybe on the other side? Oh yeah, there we go. You can kind of see them. Alright, on the other side then. Let's go ahead, loop around, go to the other side. Be like a little child, super excited to see these babies. Where'd they go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, there's both of them. That camouflage actually works quite well. Oh, I'm inside. No, gotta stay outside. Alright, cool. Then you're done looking at them and you go, Oh, what's down over here? Oh my god, look at these baby tortoises. I thought they were supposed to be giant. I don't understand how babies work. I'm too young. No, I'm kidding. I think we're adult height. Actually, I don't know. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're adult height. Um, also, that's not the end of a hippo I typically expect to see on a warning sign. I'll explain that when we get to the hippos. But yeah, off in the distance, you can see one of the giant tortoises. Something's clearly going on underneath. So you can quickly kind of zip down. Down the stairs. Oh, look at these crowds. Wild. Down the stairs, loop around, and then rush on into this little intimate section over here. Learn stuff about the tortoises. Fun fact, tortoises are delicious. That's why they didn't have a scientific name for the longest time, because the sailors who were responsible for bringing them back kept eating them. Guests, please refrain from eating the Galapagos giant tortoises. Good stuff, good stuff. It's hard to tell what these rock formations are from down over here, but from up top you can kind of tell. And of course over here we have our little waterfall. A couple babies in there right now. Taking a nap, maybe. Alright. Moving on through. Nothing over here. This is where the coming soon is happening. Ooh, a dangerous animal has escaped. Let's see if that takes itself away. I think it has. <laughs> I think it has. Cool, cool, cool. Run back in. What? Do we have protesters here? I don't have any warning about protesters. I don't see any protesters. But I'm pretty sure I hear them. What are you protesting? Yeah, what are they protesting here? Oh, come on. Just trying to do a tour here. You know what? A little bit of protesting for a little while. I'll, let's leave it be. Otherwise, we're never going to get this tour done if I keep getting distracted by everything. All right, we keep on pushing down, running down, it seems. You know, catch a couple more glimpses of the tortoises as they walk around extremely slowly. And then now uh, we get to Wolf Rock, one of the oldest uh, enclosures in this entire zoo. From up over here. Oh, look at that. Perfect timing. We get to see Buddy playing over there. Perfect timing. Yeah. Wow, just cut the end of the play session, it seems. Good stuff, good stuff. A decent sized pack over here. Oh my god. Little pups when they bark. It's just so cute. And of course, there's this side as well. Oh, again, perfect timing. Able to actually see a wolf up there striking at the pinata. Go, eat wolf, eat. Beast. Or just leave. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's cool, too. They're so cute. Yo, this enclosure is pretty cool. This enclosure is pretty cool. For being one of the first, and then obviously we, we, we went through and adjusted it afterwards. But I like its shape. I like its overall look and feel. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Still protesting? Anyway. Uh, back on the other side, if we make our way through these crowds over here, zipping and sliding through, zigging and zagging, as it were. Where are the bears? Where are the bears? I don't see any bears. Alright, let's make our way downstairs. See if we can't see any bears from down over here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at the little baby. Look at the adorable little baby. It's the whole family just chilling down over here. Or almost the whole family. Okay, I gotta get to the other side here. Into the creature cavern. Oh, <laughs> oh we caught a yawn. Um, wow. <laughs> this is the next best thing to actually being at the zoo. Oh, how I miss going to the zoo right now. Oh, look at them both just logging. They're just both just loaves of bread. Oh, they're all three loaves of bread. I missed that one camouflaging into the uh, the bedding. <laughs> Alright, then we come through over here. We're in Creature Cavern. Lots of little animals to see over here. Oh, interesting. Thought I caught a little bit of rattle action going on. Oh, one's hiding over there, actually. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, that's so cool. 
I'm like this lady over here, just like kind of crouching down, trying to get a good glimpse. What have we got over here? These are our spiders. All right. Um, uh, I can already feel my skin crawling. <laughs> Part of me doesn't want to see one. Oof. Okay. I'm going to keep moving. I want to keep moving. What about over here? We got more spiders. I don't see any. Do y'all see any? I also like the communal experience of going to the zoo and looking at some of these and being like, oh yeah, did you see it? Where? Where? I don't see it. Oh, I think that's it. On the tree there. I'm not going to stick around to find out. And our scorpions over here. There we go. There's one right over here. Very neat. Very neat. Moving on. The watering hole provides us with more options for food and drink. Not as crowded as it once used to be, but I think that's because people are now passing through it because there's so much more to see in the zoo. But if we continue upwards to the eagle eye, here is something that I've never been able to walk up properly because I did not previously use this little uh, first-person camera hack. No good views here right now. That's okay. Sometimes we'll catch a good view going up the stairs, which is always an interesting thing in my opinion. Okay, we got 18, 19 warnings. I need to check what's going on. Look at this view, though. This is awesome. This is awesome. All right, let's. I need to check what this is. Okay, are you just stressed out? I'm assuming it's stress. Yeah. Jeez, is, are a bunch of them just crossing at the same time? Okay, the stress is dropping now. All right, what are the protesters protesting since I've already had to escape? No, don't you normally get a notification about protesters? I don't hear them anymore. Hmm. All right, we'll keep an ear peeled. Where were we? Eagle Eye. Made it partway through our... Uh, <laughs> our uh, tour here before getting dragged away. Who can we abduct for our purposes? Oh, hello. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Ryan Cruz. You're now my camera crew. Uh, where are we? Oh, no. Am I among the animals? Oh, there we go. Oh, am I? I think I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm stuck. Okay, that one didn't work. What about you? Jamar Cruz. Take a cam. Oh, I don't think I'm stuck again. Ah, I can't teleport myself into one of these guys. That's fine. I guess we've, uh... I guess we've seen as much of the eagle eye as we can. Unless one of them steps out over here. Though it's pretty cool to see them enjoying the same view that I was just enjoying moments ago. And dropping a donation as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and steal somebody else's soul. You there. Stan Wall. You're mine now. There we go. Cool. So the other option is to obviously come over here. Catch the animals at play. This is also a great view. I'm really happy with this enclosure as well. It's so cool to go back to some of the old spots and just see, um, see how they're being used. In fact, let's head on over to this side. Past these concrete walls. Maybe I'm going to change them to concrete and glass. Oh yeah, there they are. They're the protesters. What are you protesting? God. Oh, oh, what are the chances? We've never caught this happen during, like, actual gameplay. But, now that we're doing the tour... Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> Don't show me your butt. <laughs> Look at the tail animations as well, eh? Ear wiggles we're already familiar with. I never noticed the, uh, the tail animations. That's super cool, though. What are the chances that that works out when we, uh, come here? All right, what are you guys protesting? The doll sheep? What have I done to them? Pretty sure they're happy. Emberly, why are you upset? Why are you upset, Emberly? Space. What's gone wrong here? Oh. Did I did I block off your access? Come on. This is strange. You are able to move. Oh, did you get stuck here? I guess. I'm going to pull you out to this side. And that should do the trick. That's really weird, though. Shouldn't have... Like, she should have at least seen this area as traversable, but I guess not. Yeah, that rock is blocking access, as was the intent. But uh, I didn't realize we had an unfortunate, um... You know, casualty of happiness there. My apologies, 
My apologies, that uh, that was inconsiderate of me. All right, back down over here. Let's go ahead and abduct another stolt. This is why unpausing can be a bit of a problem. And these animals, they're stressed, I take it. I think they're crossing the road. Every time they, they cross the road, they get stressed out. No, you. Theo, you're no longer heading down. Let's turn you around. Oh god. I'm among the animals. There we go. I'm glad you can walk through the barriers. Okay, so you get to this junction over here. Maybe you have to use the washroom finally, because God knows you've been walking for months in game time. <laughs> you can keep going over this way. These things are well enough hidden, apparently. And you can go over here, pass under the candy canes, and head on up to the workshop that, like, nobody visits. Baron. Well, you know, it's not the time of year, right? It's not the time of year, so that's fine. That's fine. Back over here. You see the polar bears? You can see their poops. You know they exist. Oh, yes! There we go. Look at that. How's this a bad view? I hate when, like, <laughs> they complain about this being... This is a good view. You're watching a polar bear cross, like, a, you know, land bridge type thing. How's that bad? Mountains off in the distance? This is pretty good. This is pretty good. What's on the other side? Run past over here. There is... Oh, this is a terrible view of the doll sheep. Oh, look, the protesters are leaving. Oh, they're so cute. Alright, let's go ahead and go back this way. Trains are seeing some traffic. They're not as full as they once used to be, but they are seeing some traffic. Make our way downstairs again. Through the mechanic. And down through the polar plunge. Again, not all that crowded, unfortunately. Not all that crowded. I was hoping to see more people come through now that the doll sheep are there. Maybe once the reindeer come through as well, we'll see a, a slightly bigger crowds. Here we are. The Aurora Borealis. Missed the sign. Let's go ahead and appreciate the, uh, the intensity of the punning over here. I'm also really happy with the sign. The color work and stuff, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, actually, if I'm completely honest. Uh, yeah, but this, this is also a neat spot to be in. I'd like to come here with a snack. Eat a, eat a platter of smoked salmon or something while watching polar bears butts around. Oh, look at that. Got a swimmer. Kimmick is about to have offspring. I don't know where Kimmick is. There's a running bear right now. I mean, come on. That's great. Oh my god. That's a... And then from here, you can even see them playing with their, uh, like, food enrichment and stuff. Yo, that's awesome. Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, this tour has got to be the most, like, luck-filled tour. We've been able to see so many, like, playful animations and things that we haven't seen before. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out. It's very... It's not like being at a zoo at all. When you go to a zoo, as you know... You never see any of the animals. Can you stop inbreeding? Stop it. Stop it. Okay, good. And where were we? Right, polar bears. Man, this zoo is massive. This zoo is massive. There's not going to be anybody here that I can abduct, unfortunately. That's too bad. Well, alright, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, anybody with a doll sheep? I have my doubts. I might just transition over to a different uh, part of the zoo. Can I take on the sheep? Or I can take on my staff, actually. You there. <laughs> Dwayne Schultz. Go ahead and... There we go. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Once you're done with the Aurora Borealis, you can head on over to... Mount Dendali. This is really pretty as well now that it's snowing. This is absolutely gorgeous. Grab some food and stuff over here. You can stay nice and cozy down over here. Cover from the snow as well. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Where are these sheep? There's one. This is a pretty good view. Nice contrast against the background as well so you can still see the animal despite the snow. Very cool. Oh, very cool. Alright. Make our way over. 
Now we can get back up, back out into the snow. If we ever need to take a seat. Oh, come on, guys. If we ever need to take a seat, we can't. Right back up there. And then, you know, before we got up the stairs as well. But if you have to throw trash, then there's plenty of spots, so hopefully we're not just throwing trash around. Having baby sheep, aren't we? Yeah, there are trees in the path. Interesting. Interesting design choice. Interesting design choice. Let's go and pop you all over there. Good. I'm glad you can actually make edits on the way. Alright, cool. And then you're back over here. That's a pretty good loop, I would say. That's a pretty good loop. If you're back over here, you can continue down south. And uh, maybe we make our way over to Baird's Tape here. You can hear the pups all the way, all the way here. Oh, right, of course. Our memorial. It's so nicely positioned right in the heart of, uh, of the zoo, I would say. The Nakedra Memorial. You can come in, you can have a seat, stay warm in here, be under the watchful eye of the security camera. Look right down into uh, the waterfall out of the eagle eye. Yanasi Plains as well. Oh, man. This is actually quite a nice spot. Quite a nice spot, actually. Nice. Facility broken down, but I'm going to entrust in my staff to take care of it while I'm doing a uh, maintenance tour. This is nice. And I'm still happy with the Tapir Tavern. The little beer glass at the side. Man. <laughs> That was, uh, that was a lot of fun to build. I'm really happy with that. Um, people are cold over here. I guess I should put some more heating down, eh? Wouldn't hurt. Heat's, heat's down up over here. Or rather, heat's up over here by the food. So, you know, if you want to feel warm, this is a good spot to be. Or, of course, over here by the fire. Beautiful fire that we built. A couple more animals to check out over here. Which one's this again? The centipede. Every time I say centipede, I got that song stuck in my head. Knife party centipede song. Every time. Some spiders in here. Come on, where are you? I have all day. Show yourselves. Over here, frogs. Oh yeah, there's one. There's another one. So much easier to spot. Oh, this one's like right up against the glass. Uh, third one back there. Very cute. Very cute. Go ahead and make our way up the stairs. It's not super crowded here right now, but it was back in its heyday. There were, there were, there were quite a few people coming through over here. Now it's uh, desolate, or at least it looks desolate. We have a limit of how many guests are actually rendering, right? So it's hard to know for sure. Hard to know for sure. Oof, oh, okay. Let's see it down there. That makes me very nervous. I'm worried it's going to start skittering away. <laughs> Where's our snake over here? There you are. Not going to lean against the glass. Never know when Harry is watching. He's just going to make the glass disappear. Let's get out of here. Now again, we can take the train away, but we're not going to take a train tour today. We did that last time. Don't need to do it again. Run back out and check out the tapirs over at Tapir Tavern. Oh, come on. Is that not an excellent view? This is amazing. This is... That's something special. We gotta get a female tape here, I forgot. Funny how things slipped my mind. Even though I said I need to- <gasps> I don't know they could jump! Did we ever see them jump? I've never- we've never seen them jump! Okay, let's keep this tour going. I'll, I'll get the female afterwards. Luck has been with us a little too much. I don't want to risk it by exiting this tour too many times. Missing my timing gaps, my timing windows. Oh, back to the wolves. Cool. I like how this, like, loop kind of feels. Um, now let's see, we can go that way. We've already looked at the bears, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we went underground to check out the bears. Let's head back to the center. Such a crowd. Oh, it's massive. It's insane. Big lines for the drinks and food and stuff as well, which is good to see, but, you know, it'd be nice to have, um... Nice to have people spread around a little bit. Yeah, people are lining up over here as well. Good stuff. Oh, cool. People are actually using the uh, picnic tables. I could so go for a hot dog right now. So go for a hot dog right now. All right, we've got some seating over here that people are using as well. Good to see. Good to see. 
And uh, here the wayfinding comes into some use because, you know, uh, I'll, I'll put the words and stuff down later as well. I'll put more signs down. But, you know, we'd look down here. We'd be like, oh, yes, uh, we know that this is... Excuse me. I'm standing here. We know that this is East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. So we know we can follow these. And uh, eventually I intend to get a nice big sign up over here, like, welcome to India kind of a thing. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll know that's where the line ends. And then the other two lines continue and we can follow them. To go to our destination that's the idea behind this wayfinding system is like it kind of guides you directly where you want to go and like the ideal path to get there so like not every loop will have every coverage or maybe it should actually but anyway i i, I digress i'm probably i talked about that during the time lapse my apologies over to moria plaza still one of my favorite entrances i think blanked by those peacocks i think it's a pretty good one i think it's a pretty good one Beautiful little elephant sculpture over here. Kids running through the sculptures. Why not? Of course, there's the opportunity of this nice, relaxing balcony that you can kind of take cover from the rain in. Right? Yeah, you can just hide away from the rain. <laughs> Looking back, I'm also leaning my head back. Sorry if I went quiet there. <laughs> oh. Oh, you poor man. What happened? Did you, like, propose to your significant other and they said no? Is uh definitely looks like it <laughs> standing out there. And then giving a donation, so I'm not gonna complain. It's very lonely. Like, I don't mind standing in the rain, it's it's fun to be in the rain every once in a while, but man. It would look lonely. Oh look at the crowd over here. Oh you can actually yeah, there's yes. This is great. And the umbrellas of multiple colors, just mimicking the uh, animal that resides here. Make our way into the actual plaza. Or into the garden, I should say. That was the plaza we were in. Oh my god, this crowd's... Out of my way. Oh, got one all to myself. Love watching their, like, head movement. One of my favorite commercials of all time... Um, was a, uh, was a... I think it's a BMW commercial. BMW or Mercedes? I forget. Uh, but it's a car commercial about their suspension system. And the entire commercial is, uh, I think it's a scientist holding up a chicken and moving the chicken's body around. And its head stays absolutely stable. And it's about their stability system. They're like, this. there's the, their suspension and whatnot. Great ad. And every time I see that kind of head movement, I remember it. <laughs> that one went running away when I arrived. Oh, hello. Hello. And goodbye. What's up? Has food just arrived? Oh, babies. Oh, they're so adorable. They're all so cute. And they're they're not too loud now either, which is nice. I was worried that as we were going to walk through here, it'll just be just a bunch of screeching. The only screeching is mine, thankfully. All right, let's make our way down. And let's go ahead and follow the line that kind of ends in the middle of nowhere right now. And this will take us over to Southeast Asia. Starting with the Gario. So many babies. Where are the adults? Are they hiding right now? So many babies. Wild. Look at the crowd as well. Like nowhere to stand. Oh, there we go. Feels like I'm at an actual, you know, zoo and it's crowded. And you know, they're taking a little swim. Beautiful. Wading in the pool. Now, actually, before I forget, I don't know how I could, but before I do, let's not forget my personal favorite. The Bengal tiger. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at those babies. Look at them all. Whole family in this one shot, I think. This is, like, terrifyingly, um... I was just about to say. I feel like the tiger can, like, jump at us. That's wild. Oh, it's so good. I might want to actually shorten the grass over here because it kind of blocks the view a little bit. Like, I can't see the cub anymore. Hmm. Alright, let's make our way back towards the crocs. There are so many animals. Alright, I can go up to Bagraba. Okay, let's go up to Bagraba. Check out the uh, scorpions. And from up over here as well, we can see... Yeah, you can see the boat ride, you can see... Oh, look at- this is a 
dope view. And this is kind of really cool, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's so much hustle and bustle. And then from up over here, you can kind of see the tigers. Not the best views of the tigers, but the alternate view of the tigers. Then over here, sitting in the eye of the tiger. Oh, you know what? This isn't atrocious. The uh, little pinata there is at an ideal spot to view from here. But you have to be really quite fortunate to get that view. You have to arrive here at like just the right time. Maybe our luck has run out. More scorpions over here. Can't see them. Bad. This one you have to like climb up these rocks. But you can't do that in first person camera. All right, back on over. Of course, we can come around this way and check out the elephants. Oh my. Oh my. Taking a little lie down over there. And just the sound of the waterfall and everything. This is something special. And off in the distance, you can see we've got an elephant traversing into the newly expanded area. Oh, and look at the little baby over there. And the baby over there. There's two babies over there. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hang on, party. Hang on. We got a better view from... Uh... Where's the other one? Oh, gotta make my way around this. Better view from over here, perhaps? It's a better view of this area, not the far area, though. To get a good view of the far area, you do really want to kind of go down this way, don't you? Make your way through and down into... The Ivory Palace. Yeah, I really like that sign and everything as well. Nicely crowded still. Lots of people checking this space out. This is a massive enclosure. This one's a massive enclosure. But big enclosures for big animals, I guess, right? You can kind of scurry over to this side as well. Oh, no, no, no. Not, not here. Not yet. But here. Oh, wow. Wow. That's extremely close. How's that baby eating that massive... Look at those poops. They're, they're the size of that baby's ears. It was a great video I saw of a, uh, of a... Of a baby elephant following behind its, I don't know, mom or dad. Just a little too closely. And it got uh, quite the gift. Let's put it that way. Quite the gift from its parent. Where is... I thought I saw... Oh yeah, there we go seen the butt make our way over and across so cute this is awesome this is great that that's great and then over here the rhinos what I want to do is I can check out the rhinos over here little baby reminder of uh, who was it Viraj that times but Life goes on, I suppose. This is really neat. And then what about on the other side over here? Oh, yes. <laughs> Perfect spot to turn around and check. That's awesome. I'm sorry. I know I've been saying the word awesome like so often throughout this tour, but I'm truly having a good time here. This feels, this feels cool. This is just insane. Look at those two. Just chilling. Just chilling. All right, we can loop out over here, get some quick bites to eat, a drink perhaps, sit down, chill at this little uh, covered area, you know, a little bit of cover. No animals here right now, unfortunately. But you know, when they do step out, I could put some more toys and stuff down over here, but even then, even without that, it's just a nice serene place to chill down over here. We're now officially at the Temple of Aura. Go ahead and take this uh, interesting little back path over here. It seems like some guests are doing that now, so that's great. That's good. I was worried about that, you'll remember. But it wouldn't be used at all. Any luck over here? No such luck, no. It's okay, we'll keep moving. Past the rickety bridge. Excuse me, there we go. <laughs> Saying excuse me to a... I don't mind, I'd rather be polite than not. More food and stuff to have over here. A cacophony of sounds. Oh, 
buddy over here is looking at the animals, I think, from way too far away. Don't complain about the view from there. Make our way down over here. Couple little beasties to check out. Oh yeah, there's a snake up there. On the rock. What about our... Oh, I don't know if I want to... Oh, they're big. They're huge. I can see them from over here. Couldn't even see the spiders from this distance. Get away. Dangerous animals escaped. I'm sure that'll sort itself out. And you can see the Komodo dragons. Look at the... Look at the... Uh, Komo Shun as well across the way. It's a great view of the animals and people are uh, enjoying their presence. Good stuff. Okay, moving back around. I want to get that good view. Move back around. Run, run, run before they get away. Gotta keep going. Gotta keep going. Here we go. Oh yeah, and through the mist and stuff, it actually looks quite nice. Actually looks quite nice. Do we have a donation bin in the area? Yes, we do. We have a couple. I like this guy's shirt. That's cute. Little baby over there as well. Look, like the entire family's over here almost. And that little baby just came out from the water. You can tell the shine. Oh, and that one too. This is great. I like this a lot. I like this a lot, but why not check out the uh, orangutan? Make our way up over here. See if we can't catch one of them playing the uh, keyboard or something. And of course, grab a snack if we need to. Lots of spots to eat and use the washroom and stuff. Where are you? Where are you? No one over here. All right, all right, moving on. Good to see the crowds though. People are coming up over here. What are you looking at? What's over here? Trees and like a rhino off in the distance. Don't, don't complain about the view if you're going to stand at spots like that. There we go. Oh, yes. Can you imagine being under... Underneath this? As this happens? I'm definitely glad I changed what the, um... The bridge looks like. Okay. Inbreeding. We gotta stop. No, 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 no. Don't get cuddly. Listen, I know you're cute, but there we go. Stop it. I was just watching the orangutan cross, too. I felt so fortunate to be there. Where were we? Over here. Right over here somewhere. Renaming just a bunch of guests today. Stolen. <laughs> stolen your body, stolen your consciousness. It's mine now. Oh! Look at that. Taking a little drink. <laughs> what a view! What a view! All right, let's let's take the uh, let's take the tunnel. I don't actually open it, do I? No, I don't. Even if I come close, can't see the animals here right now. If the animals were occupying, oh yeah, okay, that's not bad actually. If the animals were occupying the space more right now, it'd be a lot more crowded. I'm glad the guests use this tunnel when there's a reason to use it. Look at that crowd as well. Jeez. The same crowd we saw earlier looking at the uh, the crocs, right? We make our way over. No, they're not out here right now. Are they over here? Oh yeah, the babies. You can see the babies taking cover right now. Chilling in the shade. Wow, this is quite the wild crowd actually. It's a lot of people. Lots of spots to eat and stuff. Glad to see that it's not super congested. People are able to move around. Oh, that's pretty neat as well. You can kind of see a tangle from here and you go, Oh, I want to check that out. And you realize you have to kind of go around the loop, pass a few more donation bins. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. And it's, again, nice to see people actually hanging out over here on the pier. On the dock, whatever you want to call it. Where's the animal? What are you looking at? Oh! Hello! What a cutie. <laughs> what a cutie. Alright, so that's that taken care of. We leave Bang Croc Market. Another experiment that went, I would say, well. Orangutango and, and Bang Croc Market have been... I don't know, it's hard to tell favorite enclosures. It really is. I, I like them all for like different kind of reasons, you know? I wonder what my least favorite enclosure is. <laughs> it's also hard to tell. Alright, let's make our way through this crowd. Get out of the Croc Dock. 
what else have we seen or not seen in this area? We've seen all the animals in this area. We've seen the peafowl. We need to... Oh, man, right. The bazaar, right? And let's not forget the uh, Flamingo Park either. Go around this way. People using the ATM. That's always nice to see. And into Flamingo Park. I really love this sign, too. <laughs> Zipping by, grabbing a snack, I think. Good stuff. I'm really happy with this space. Too bad they don't come up over here. But this is a nice spot to just kind of sit and chill. Watch them wade. Read about... Flamingos. Flamingi. Take a little dip if you're burning up. And then we're back at the bears. Back at the bears. Go past the Flamingo Park, though. We can take a right turn over here. We end up... That's to get down uh, to the food court and stuff. We can continue over this way. Continue over this way. We find ourselves among the camels. No way. Are you underneath the... No, okay. I was like, don't tell me that I just managed to catch them under the... Uh, in, in the lot as well. That would be too fortunate. You can come in through here. And you can get pretty close, actually, to them. Within spitting distance. Within spitting distance. I didn't know camels could jump. I mean, okay, I know camels can jump, but I didn't know they could jump in-game. This one run. These things make so much money for us. They rack up the donations just because of how centralized their viewing spot is. And of course, this was the Oasis Outpost. The beautiful little uh, minaret off in the distance that I cannot quite catch right now. It's here somewhere. What else? Now, one thing I should probably do is make a connection from over here to the monasteries up there. Because it is a bit of a journey to get up there. You can obviously get up to the... Um, to the ride over here, which again, I think I do need to make it a non-shuttle type. We should make it a loop. Or you walk all the way around over here and you can see guests are not really doing that. Things really sparse out over here. And then you can get up over here. That needs to be repaired. Go ahead and call a mechanic right now. There we go. You can get up over here. Get a decent view of the bears, I would say. Oh, good. There are, there are people down here. That's good. Using the ATMs, buying food and stuff. That's good. That's good. How can you not stay here? How can you not take a seat and just observe this animal right now? Sit down and respect the animal. <laughs> Go to the washroom. Okay, that's fair too. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, and the baby! Just in time. So glad I didn't turn around. They're so small. Oh, and the other one. <laughs> They're so cute. Alright, let's make our way out. Make our way around. Check out the snow leopards. Walk past the uh, Great Wall. Make our way over, and then I should be able to... I get up there? Ah, yes, right. Over here. Loop around, climb up top, get across, and then from here... We can't see the bears now, because... Oh, there's one. Taking a little dip. If we keep going, we should be able to see the snow leopards, hopefully. I hear one. Oh, look at that. Going across the branch. Oh. No, okay, it looks like they were going across the branch. Instead, leaping into the water. Take that, I'll take that. No more. None others. You can get a pretty good view of them, actually, if they do climb up there from down over here. Better than I had expected, if I'm completely honest. But from up over here, we can make our way, if I'm not mistaken, down over here. Yeah. And it looks like people are using this little ramp, which is nice. You make your way down over here, and you get fed directly into the Unforbidden City. Where you can check out the giant pandas. Castle Black and White. Running around, having a good time, hopefully. Taking a dip. 
Oh, that's so... It's great. Just bumping noggins, fair enough. And then you can come back over here and play the great game. Check out the red pandas. Yes. Oh, so close. Why aren't you playing on the trebuchet? There's nothing I can put on it, is the thing. There aren't any toys or anything I can put on it, I don't think. The climbing itself, you'd expect to be desirable enough. But, okay, with that done, if we go back down the stairs, loop back around, go up, and around this way. Any guests over here? Yeah, we got a couple guests. We can go ahead and check out Pangolin. Oh, look at that one scurrying by. We've given them a lot more open space to, like, just chill and enjoy the sun and just nature and soil and everything. Hopefully they'll like this. Definitely appropriate feedback I got with regards to uh, how much natural space they had. Oh! Oh, there's... <laughs> they're so cute. I just can't get over them. And there's a little... <laughs> little, uh portrait or whatever you want to call it we put up as well good stuff what are you up to buddy they're so cute all right some trees in our path over here glad i spotted those let's go ahead and move them out move you out as well let's go oh then you can come through you see the end of the great wall over here i do really like the great wall i think it's come out pretty nicely oh right underneath the tracks over here you could like hit it with your hand if you wanted to do a jump and then you can hop on to the ride and make your way out quite a few people in this train actually that's not bad what else i guess is that everything i feel like that's everything what am i forgetting this floating tree bring you down buddy back down to earth I think, uh, I think that's everything, because if we loop back over here now, that'll take us back towards, like, the bazaar and stuff. Seen the flamingos, we've seen the camels, we've seen all of the East Asian animals, we've seen all the Indian animals, we've seen all of the North American animals, the Arctic animals, yeah, I, I think that's everything. Wow, and then if you want to make your way out, obviously you could take the train and that would zip you all the way back to the entrance slash exit. Or, you walk, catch another glimpse of some of these animals, buy some more goods, get some uh, merchandise maybe, get a gift or two from Bizarre Gifts. <laughs> you would cut your way through Flamingo Park if you're in a rush. Like if you just really gotta go. Late for a meeting or something, I don't know. Rush over, you head down this way, you zip by over here. Burst through these doors, back by the bears. Go past them, take a left turn over here, and there you have it. We are at the entrance. Let's take one last look before we leave. One last look. Oh, there we go. Good to see guests using the trains over here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the tour, I guess. That's the tour. Make our way out. Because, you know, you haven't really finished your tour if you haven't left. There's the goodbye sign. There's the goodbye sign. And away you go. I gotta redo the entrance. But that's, uh, that's it. That's the zoo, zoo tour. I'm pretty sure we hit all the notes. We were here, we were here, we were here. Been there, we've been there, been there, been there, been there, been there, been there. We didn't get to go up over here, but you can't get there without a train, right? Um, we've been all around here, all around here. Yeah, I think that was everything. Wow, that's, that is, I was, I wasn't wrong. That's pretty much the entire episode. Pretty much the entire episode. Emily and Hideout need some cleaning. Oh, the keeper over. That research is complete. That's fine. Let's go ahead and pause for a second. Just to give me a little bit of time. Dangerous animals escaped. I'm guessing... Oh, no. Some, uh, how did you get out? Where is the escape? That doesn't make it... Oh, my God. How did you sneak in there? How did you sneak in there? 
That's just cheating. That's just cheating. Oh. There. Go ahead and unpause. Emergency capture you. Hopefully you'll get moved. Hopefully I don't have to like readjust the thing and then remove. That would be annoying. But yeah, that's uh, that's that, I guess. If we take a look at this, what have we won? As the elephant just parades by us over here. What have we got? What did we accomplish? I thought you said I won something. Oh no, you know what? A new one's been assigned. We're almost at the souvenir profits. Um, look at that. How can the requ requirement be that, but the uh, reward be such a small fraction of it? This doesn't make sense. And then in terms of our... Oh, look at that. That's not bad. I was expecting some failings, actually, considering I wasn't even paying attention to the animals. So I was considering a couple four stars and maybe even a three star, but it seems like uh, that wasn't the case. It's cool to see the train go by on the uh, the Great Wall as well. Oh, you know what? You know what I want to catch? I want to catch this. I want to catch this. This is... Like a postcard, right? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Pretty happy with this zoo. Lots of blood, sweat, and tears. Heart and soul. However you want to put it. The big zoo. 75 episodes. What's next? What's next? Next up is the reindeer enclosure, right? Uh, and I've seen all your requests with regards to don't make it Christmas themed. I will not. I will find the perfect balance between what many of you have suggested. There's a lot of ideas there that I like, so fear not. Um, and, and I just want to touch on something. I've seen quite a few people uh, mention that it's, it's upsetting to see that the North became so uh, Christmas centered. And not really, actually. I was thinking about that. I was like, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Everything else is so cultural, but the North over here kind of got abandoned. And then I, then I thought about it and during the tour as well, not really. It's just this centerpiece that's Christmas themed. But, you know, the Aurora Borealis is not Christmas at all. The uh, Ursa Major um, constellation isn't Christmas related at all. Uh, the name Nanook Nook, right, is not at all Christmas related. So we, we did step away for the polar bears. And then um, Mount Dendali, again, that's a that's a cultural reference that we've got, and it's a lot more of a natural enclosure. So I'm actually quite happy with uh, the fact that despite having a little bit of, you know, Christmas uh, spirit and whatnot in the area, we didn't let it take over the entirety of the uh, the Arctic Circle, as it were, that we're building. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that. I wanted to hear what or read, I guess, what y'all thought about that, because I felt, you know, between the uh, uh, Inukshuks and the... Uh, the, the constellations and, and the names and the stars and all that. I thought we did a pretty good job of maintaining a cultural connection here. Uh, nonetheless, folks, cultural connection aside, it is time for us to disconnect, unfortunately, because this is where I'm going to call it a session. Like I said, it's going to be a tour session, but we did get a little bit of work done. Uh, you know, fixed up the pangolin enclosure, got a little bit of wayfinding in there. Um, but this is where I'm going to have to call it. It's been a long recording session. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the zoo uh, we built this, and we're going to continue to build this. Um, just a reminder, uh, a little video that you might enjoy is placed in the pinned comment down below. It's a short one, so if, you, if you're looking for something else to watch right now, then check it out. Uh, but this is where this video and I will bid you farewell. Massive thanks, as always, goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.